Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Ale Vashionu and I'm the lead photographer at Aleva Photography. Today we'll start with camera settings. Last time I was introducing myself, what I do, I'm a photographer and a filmmaker. An amateur filmmaker actually, yeah, thank you. So, today we'll go into camera settings. I'll teach you how I set my camera and as a beginner like you, how you should be setting your cameras to take nice pictures. Um, Personally, I would say you just have to know the basics, yeah, and that's what I'm going to be putting you through. You just have to know the basic, and later on you can you can bend the rules or break the rules to how it's going to suit your need. Photography has its rules, yes, it's true, and I'm going to be teaching you all of what you would need in your course of photography, whether business or a hobby or whatsoever you want to do with your pictures or you want to do with your camera I mean you just got your brand new camera and by the way I'll, I'll be uploading another video where I'm going to put you through a buying guide if you haven't bought uh, your camera you're looking at buying a new camera you're confused on which camera to buy as a matter of fact one of the things I, I don't like hearing from from people or amateurs is Hey, Aleva, what camera should I buy? Hey, Aleva, should I buy a Nikon, a Sony, or a Canon? Those, those are big questions. Like, I can't answer you at once as an amateur. So I promise I'm going to put up a video where you can decide which camera will suit your need for you to go for. So, with me, I have a Nikon camera here. Yeah, it's one of uh, my, my oldest cameras in, in house. Yeah, so. For a starter, let's use this basically for our training purpose. Yeah. So this is a, a Nikon D7, D7000. Yes. And um, uh, we we'll use this for our training purpose. How do you set your DSLR? On the DSLR, we have automatic mode, we have manual mode, we have shutter mode, we have aperture priority mode. They are all uh, designated as aperture using an A on your camera, manual with an M, sh um, shutter speed priority mode with an S. Uh, sorry, I'm not used to the other modes because I'm so much used to manual strictly. But of course, these other modes will also be suitable for you if you know how to go about it and use it. And I'm going to put all of you through with, uh, with our subsequent courses. Yeah. So, there is a relationship that exists between these three modes. This relationship can be explained for us detailed using an exposure triangle uh, relating the trio relationship between shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. So, let's see how this basic element gets to influence the exposure of your pictures. By the way, if I'm talking about exposure, I mean how bright or how dark your picture gets to be. The shutter speed is the time taken for the shutter to open or close. The shutter is located inside the camera. The aperture which is located in the camera lens is how wide or narrow the camera lens gets to open to permit light to enter the camera. And then the ISO gets to measure the sensitivity of the camera sensor. Shutter speed is an element that is in charge of time. It is the time taken for the camera shutter to open or close. And it's measured in fractions of a second. You're going to see figures like uh, 1 over 125. It's actually 1 over 125 of a second. 1 over 1000 of a second. 1 over 500 of a second or 30 seconds and this shutter speed has a major role to play on your pictures the higher your shutter speed the faster the shutter gets to be and it's it makes you or it gives you an edge to take crisp sharp images the slower your shutter speed you are prone to getting a blur picture so you have to put this in mind that when you are setting your shutter speed, are you looking at getting a blur image or you're looking at getting a sharp image?
Secondly, your aperture. Shutter speed is an element that is in charge of time. It is a time taken for the camera shutter to open or close and it's measured in fractions of a second. You're going to see figures like um, 1 over 125. It's actually 1 over 125 of a second. 1 over 1000 of a second. 1 over 500 of a second or 30 seconds. And this shutter speed has a major role to play on your pictures. The higher your shutter speed, the faster the shutter gets to be and it's, it makes you or it gives you an edge to take crisp sharp images. The slower your shutter speed, you are prone to getting a blur picture. So you have to put this in mind that when you are setting your shutter speed, are you looking at getting a blur image or you are looking at getting a sharp image. Secondly, your aperture. The aperture is responsible for how wide or open your camera lens gets to operate or move. The wider the aperture, the more light gets to enter through the lens and hit the camera sensor, making your pictures brighter. The smaller the aperture, the lesser the light gets to enter the camera through the camera lens. And apart from this, the aperture also has an effect on your image. The effect is known as depth of field. The wider your camera aperture, the more either the foreground of your object or the background of your object gets to be blocked, thereby giving you a depth of field. So if you have a shallow depth of field, you must have set your aperture to a wide opening and if you have a wider depth of field, that means you set your camera aperture to a smaller opening. And please be informed that your camera aperture is normally measured in f-stops. So if you see your camera uh, display, you see things like f1.4 or 1.8 or 2.2, 2.4, uh, 2.5 and that's how it's graduated till f22 or 26 as the case may be. Yeah. So these f-stops, it's you have to, you have to be careful because the the arithmetic here there's 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 something uh, I should describe it as an inverse I would say it's an inverse proportion whereas as the number is increasing your aperture opening is becoming smaller what I'm trying to say is if you have an aperture of f9 that means your aperture opening was smaller or is smaller than f stop of f1.4 your aperture is going to be wider i'm not good at animations so i will do my best uh, maybe using my phone to draw and you see what i'm trying to talk about yeah and thirdly it's the iso the iso is responsible for measuring the sensitivity of the camera sensor the higher the ISO, the more the camera sensor becomes sensitive to light. So in return, it's going to give you brighter image. And the lesser your ISO, uh, the darker your picture gets to be. Having it in mind that if you set your camera to a very high ISO, you are prone to getting noisy pictures. So at night, you normally take pictures, even if it's your camera phone, you notice that there are some kind of grains on on, on the pictures, uh, uh, like red dots, you see a lot of red dots or blue dots. By the time, maybe if you zoom it in more, you're going to see more of the greens. That's high ISO. It's unfortunate that most ca uh, camera phones, I'm using this as an example because you, you as an amateur, you must have uh, had experiences using your camera phone. Your camera phone, your camera phone is very, very similar to what's going on here in this camera. So you go out at night you take pictures you notice that okay they tend to be more noisy than daytime the camera has been set to automatic mode so it's the cap it's the camera that is setting everything for you be the shutter speed the aperture and iso and because the camera knows that okay 
we are out in the dark. The camera decided to increase the ISO for you and reduce the shutter speed for you. And that's why sometimes at night you get a blur picture. Because as I said earlier, the lesser your shutter speed, the more you stand to get a blur image. And the higher the ISO, the more you tend to get a noise image. And that's why your pictures from your camera phone tend to be noisy during the night. Let's have a look at all I was trying to explain using the exposure triangle. Now, I spoke about ISO, aperture with an A. Okay, let me show this again. Aperture and your shutter speed with an S. So, here's your triangle. I just want you to know that the three always go together. So, the higher your aperture or the wider your aperture, that means you have to turn down your shutter speed or ISO, turn it down, so that you will get a proper exposure. Remember, you always have to make your ISO stand low, as minimum as possible. So, if you look through your viewfinder, you find a gauge, something like this, and in the middle you see an O. So what you are always trying to do is to always make your pointer to be at the middle. Always do your best to find your pointer at the middle. If your pointer should deviate from the zero and go towards the positive, it shows that your picture will be too bright and if you should go towards the negative, your picture will be too dark. So always do your best for your pointer to be at zero. It's better your pointer is slightly below zero, not above zero. It's always better for your picture to be underexposed than overexposed and always have it in mind. It's better to shoot in raw than jpeg i'm going to put you through that how to take pictures in raw format than jpeg because in raw format you always gain all the qualities all the properties of the pictures better than shooting in jpeg jpeg is like the camera helps you to process your picture at once while in raw you get total control over your pictures later on in post-production let's see how the aperture works if this is your aperture, which is in your camera lens, if we designate this as f slash 1.4, that means f slash 5.6 will be smaller as I earlier on tried explaining. That's how it reduces. And f slash 9.0 should be something smaller again f slash 11 next f slash 22 so this is how the aperture works it's like your f stop is inversely proportional to the opening so your f-stop is inversely proportional to the aperture opening just define it like that <laughs> that's my own definition let me take it this s is normally designated as 1 over 125 something like this you see 1 over 500 you see 1 over 1000 and sometimes you see something like this which is 30 seconds the shutter speed s is the time taken for the shutter to open and close time taken for shutter to open and close yeah so ISO now 
Nej, jeg er så hvis når man lige valued as numbers, sometimes 64, 100, 200, 400, da 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 da, til some cameras up to 124,000, yeah. So, like I told you, always do your best to maintain it at a very minimum of 64, 100, or 200, yeah. Some cameras, you start noticing noise from 8,000 at night or 12,000, but always do your best to make it minimum. So, I want us to see some pictures that I have that will show us um, how you can play with your shutter speed or aperture to achieve such I've always done my best to achieve very nice um, exposure in my cameras. So I just decided to go up and find a noisy picture quickly for us on, on, on Google. So here is an example of a noisy image. You can see the beetles there uh, on the flower. Uh, this 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 image looks really noisy. This is a very good example of what's meant by a noisy picture. Let's go next. So here is um, an example of my picture. I I did this shoot with an intention of blurring the background out. This is having a or, or achieving a very shallow depth of field. I shot this image, this should be with an 85 millimeter lens at 1.8 aperture opening. You can see that the background is very blur, you can't see anything and the foreground too is blur, leaving the subject in focus. This image is gotten from my Instagram. Please follow me on Instagram at Aleva Photography to to see more beautiful works. Well, how I do my shoots and uh, results of my of my my pictures. This is a picture of Diane. You can see that the background is very blur here, and then the foreground is also blur, leaving her in focus. This is what your aperture can do for you this is what aperture can help you to achieve yeah at f 1.8 but this this must have been at f 2.8 yeah because i'm trying to make her sharp as possible yeah try to make uh, everything in focus about her that's why i must have pushed it to 2.8 yeah so of course you can see shoot at 1.8 but you just have to be very careful when you're shooting um uh, a full image of someone from a far distance 1.8 will likely give you a blur picture so you, uh, you have to be extremely careful yeah this is another example of a uh, uh, shallow depth of field you can see that the background is very blur yeah and these are all from my instagram uh, handle you, you can you can see them they are all available there so at night this is a time when you want to pick those beautiful lights that you get to see. This is a pre-wedding I did for someone uh, in 2018, as you can see the date there. Yeah, so you you want to get the ambient light. You have to increase your shutter. Sorry, increase your ISO and reduce your shutter speed in order to achieve something like this. Yeah, and then. I used a light, of course, an AD three, AD six hundred. I used AD six hundred for this shoot, and my power was very minimal. Uh, forget about uh, the terms I'll be using now. I'll, I'll also introduce us to lighting later on, and then you understand the type the type of light I used in course of this photo shoot and how I achieved it. But for this in particular, I raised the ISO, I reduced my shutter speed, which helped me to get the reflection in the water the light in the water the reflected light in the water and then the light behind the, the couple this is another example of a shallow depth of field how you can achieve 
shallow depth of field by opening your aperture and using a long focal length and always try for your subject to be far away as possible from the background that will make your background more blur and this is example of using um, taking advantage of shutter speed this is what's known as light painting i used light painting for this picture this must have been shot with a shutter speed of say 25 seconds i think so it's been it's been three years now you know, 2017 so it's just you setting your your camera on the tripod and reducing the shutter speed to about 25 seconds while you move around with a source of light yeah and then that helped me to achieve this this image yeah and yeah, of course if you want me to do an example of this again of course just drop a comment and then yeah, if we get high hearts or high likes with such comments i'll consider doing an example or a tutorial on how to light paint this is another example of light painting that I did for a client that came to to do uh, a shoot for a cousin's um, uh, baby competition, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so this is another example of um, long exposure or light painting Yeah, using your shutter speed. So like I said, it's not as if reducing your shutter speed we always have a disadvantage it has advantage when the time comes for it where you will need it so in course of long exposure you will need a very slow a, a very low shutter speed yeah and this is a good example so guys as much as you think the camera is very important i bet you your lens is also very important yeah i like this part yeah this is where you get to up your game i must tell you that yeah um it reminds me of an advertoria from unilever aleva unilever the band b without bb is like a train without an engine yeah sorry guys so your lens is very important for you it's a game changer like i'm telling you this yeah from from a professional's uh, point of view yeah so where's the lens located guys there's your lens and lens camera lens camera this is a basic example of what's known as a prime lens when i say prime lens i mean fixed lens yeah um you don't zoom in or zoom out with this lens basically it's you going towards your subject or withdrawing from your subject you are the person using your body as the zoom you either go closer or you come back from the object what you want to take a picture of and we have examples of prime lenses. We have a uh, 24 millimeters. We have a uh, 35 millimeters. We have 85 millimeters, which is very good for portraits. As a matter of fact, I'm using an 85 millimeter lens for this video that I'm doing right now. Yeah. Um, the lens is normally measured in millimeter. It's an angle of view. The, the millimeter is an angle of view for. For the lens, if I if I if I put it so sorry, I'm trying to cut everything in this shot. Yeah, and another good example of lenses we have the zoom lens. It's not just the prime lens, where you can stay one place, zoom, you draw your object closer to you or away from you at an ease, standing at one place. And uh, examples of uh, zoom lenses that we have, we have uh, telephoto lenses which. Can range from 200 to 400 millimeters or 600 millimeter uh, lenses yeah those are pretty expensive lenses out there and most places that you get to see people using such lenses are the the wildlife photographers or the football photographers if i, if I must say or sports photography sports photographers yeah 
this is an example of a zoom lens where you zoom in or you zoom out this is a 24 to 120 f4 lens yeah that's the way you can describe a lens what the lens is trying to make you understand is for this one in particular at 24 mm you are getting an aperture of f4 your aperture is bigger than f stops remember that please yeah so at 24 mm when you zoom out to the widest where you can see the widest angle you are achieving um, an aperture of f4 and then you zoom all through to 120 mm that's drawing someone closer to you you still achieve a you still achieve an aperture of f4 yeah that's why it's called 122 Sorry, 24 to 120 yeah 24 to 120 mm f4 we have uh, 18 to 35 mm you see at the end of the lens you see right um, f 3.5 to 5.6 yes to 5.6 g things like that. that's for nikon and then for canon you also see similar thing there well I'm, I'm i'm more used with uh i'm, I'm more uh, used to a camera sorry so what I will be teaching you here will still be very familiar with uh, those of you that are using uh, the, the Canon cameras here Please don't forget to turn on the post notification or subscribing to my channel immediately after this video or you can do it right now using this link please and please always remember to share this link to your friends because I feel like you subscribing to my channel is a way of paying for my services. It really, really means a lot to me. Uh, sorry, it really means a lot to me. I must admit that, guys. Yeah, so I really appreciate if you can share this link to your friends and invite more people to subscribe to this channel so that it will be a, as a way of encouraging me to do more videos where I will be teaching you guys more how I do my photography, like in and out of my photography course. Thank you, guys.